Tree of Restoration, how we doing? Yeah. <laughs> y'all already know the drill. Y'all already know the drill. I need y'all to scoot up. Scoot up. Please, please, please don't make me start calling y'all out by name. I need y'all to scoot up. We believe in proximity. We want y'all to be close. We believe it's a move of God that's about to happen, and we do not want y'all to miss it by any means. Please scoot up. If you see some chairs... In front of you, thank you, thank you. I see y'all moving, I see y'all moving. Uh, please come in the sanctuary if you're not already in here. How y'all doing, bro? I missed y'all, bro. We ain't had church last week. How y'all doing? Good. We back at the tree, y'all. We back at the tree. And it's just a move of God. How was the fast going real quick? Who fasting in here? Make some noise if you fasting. Make some noise. Ooh. I know y'all hungry. <laughs> I know y'all are hungry, but we're going to finish in Jesus' name. Please move forward if you haven't already. Everybody rise. Everybody rise for me. Everybody rise in the house of the Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Y'all know what Sunday it is? Does anybody know? Ooh. 
So what is Palm Sunday? Does anybody know what Palm Sunday is? See, if you don't know what Palm Sunday is, Palm Sunday is the Sunday that Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem. He came into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey, and what they did was they broke off palms, they broke off leaves, and as he was coming into the city of Jerusalem, they threw it at him. And what did they say? They said, Hosanna, highest in heaven. <laughs> they called my Jesus, Hosanna, highest in heaven. And as we already know that Jesus is coming into this place, he's already here. We know he's omnipresent. He's the great I am because he always is being. So he's here already. So right now we're going to go into a moment of prayer. We're going to go into a moment of thanksgiving. And as he's coming into this place like he did on Palm Sunday, call him Hosanna. <laughs> call him Jesus. Call him by his righteous name. Say he is holy of holies of holies. As I was coming here today, I was reminded of 2 Samuel chapter 6. And it was a lady named Michael. David was bringing the ark of God back into the city of David. And he was praising with all of his might. He was praying. He was praising all through the city. And a woman came up to him and said, oh, you making yourself look foolish. You making yourself look crazy, king of Israel. And he looked at that girl and said, God put me in that position. God has put me in this position. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to worship him. He said, matter of fact, I'll get more undignified than this. You think I look crazy now? You think I look crazy now? I'll get more undignified than this. He said, matter of fact, he said, I'll make myself look humiliated in my own eyes. He's not worried about who's looking at you. think I care if you're looking at me? You think I care if you looked at my social media page? You think you care if I'm looking at you? I'll make myself look crazy because what I'm going to do is I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'll get more undignified than this. And I believe God is about to take us to a higher dimension in our praise, a higher dimension in our worship. But you can't be worried about who's behind you, who's beside you, who's in front of you. It's about him. It's about him. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Lord God, we thank you right now in this place. Open them into your heart. Open them into your mind. Block out all of distractions because he's been so good. Because just think of his goodness really quick. Huh? And if you're looking for evidence that God is real, he's right here in this place. If you're looking for evidence that God is real, he's right here. If you're looking for evidence that God is real, just look at me. Just look at me. Because uh, I am evidence that God is real. I should have been dead. I had somebody tell me one time that Jalen... You're better than, your life is better than any sermon I've ever watched. Because he seen my pain, but he also seen my promise. He saw my pain, but he also saw my peace. He saw my love. Open them into your heart right now, really quick. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Lord God, right now in this place, Lord God, we bring you in. We want to say thank you. We want to say thank you, Father God, and we want to usher you, Father God, into this room. We want to usher you into this atmosphere, Father God. We ask that you flow like a river in this place, that you blow like the winds, Father God, that you burn like a fire in us unto day, Father God, that if people are wondering if you are real, they leave out of this place having full evidence, having full example, having full testimony that you are God, that you are real and that you are a healer, Father God, in this place. There's some people hurting, Father God, asking for deliverance, Father God, right now in this place. We ask that you give it to them. We ask that you give it to them. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the mercy, Father God. And we give you this service. We give you this atmosphere right now in this place. We say thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on yeah, and lift yeah, up yeah, a yeah, shout yeah. of praise in this place. Come on and lift up a shout of praise in this place. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So if you know my God is alive and well, come on and lift up your voice in this place and praise the name of the living Jesus. Begin to worship his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, so this morning we have a new song called The Joy. Amen. How many of y'all know that the joy of the Lord is our strength? All right, all right. So we need y'all's help this morning to sing it, okay? So media, if y'all can have the lyrics on the screen for us so they can also follow along. All right, so I'm going to sing and y'all going to follow after me, okay? 
the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Go ahead and sing it, the joy. There we go. Now listen carefully. Oh, my soul, bless his name, all that is within me. Sing, oh, my There we go. The joy of the Lord is the joy of the Lord. There we go. All right, y'all ready to start it with us? All right, okay. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If y'all want to go ahead and just go ahead and stretch so you got to have some time to dance, amen? This is the day you
only you can satisfy my heart. Only you can satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy my heart. Jesus, Jesus, only you can satisfy my heart. Only you can satisfy my soul, yes. Only you can satisfy my heart. Jesus, Jesus, only you, only you can satisfy.
can satisfy. Nobody else but you, Jesus. Nobody. Will you sing, Jesus? So with that, Father God, we thank you for you are the one who satisfies. Father God, we thank you for you are the one that satisfies. I want you to say sweet words to him. Tell him how much he satisfies you. That there is nothing else. There is nothing else that fills, that fills you up like Jesus. Speak to your father. Speak to your father. Father God, less of us and more of you. We want to be filled up by you. Because we know you are the only one who fills and it's a permanent filling. We know that the world is going to pass away. We know that all of these things are going to fade, but you remain the same. You are the one that satisfies us. There is nothing that fills us up like Jesus. We've sought and we've gone far and wide seeking things but we still come back like a prodigal son and daughter because we know that it is only you. We know that at the end of it all, it'll be you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. How are we doing, children of God? How are we doing, children of God? How are we feeling? Y'all can be seated. Can somebody help me put this on the floor? Thank you. You know, the lights get so bright up here, you guys. And I'd rather, you know, I'd rather be here with y'all. Like I said, like I said, how are we feeling? I know Jalen asked earlier, how has y'all's fast been going? Good? Y'all not about to pass out because y'all haven't eaten breakfast? Y'all promise? Okay, okay. I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. Whoa, I'm honored to be up here. I'm honored. I'm humbled. And I thank the people and the leaders of this house for giving me the opportunity to speak to y'all today. It really is something I don't take for granted. And I will always give honor where honor is due. So before we get started, let's, let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity and the blessing it is to give your word to your people. I pray, O Lord, that as your message goes, let it fall on fertile ground. I pray, O Lord, that your will will be done in this moment, and it wouldn't be just a message for this Sunday, but it would be something that follows them. Let them seek you after this. Less of me and more of you. Let your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it's the title up there. No. Okay. So the title of this message is What is Your Pleasure? And when I got it at first, I don't know if it's because we're fasting. I don't know. Maybe it was a Sunday because, you know. But my first thought was Chick-fil-A. And, yeah, my back is big. And so my first thought was Chick-fil-A because what did they say when they give you your order? What did they say after they take your order? They say, my, they say, my pleasure. And so I was like, oh, is that what he's talking about? Is that, is, that, is that my pleasure? Is that what we're talking about? But I went to go, look, why my pleasure instead of your welcome? And the definition of pleasure is a feeling of happy satisfaction and enjoyment. So essentially, for the Chick-fil-A workers that are giving you your, um, your number two, your number three, or whatever your order is, they're basically saying it is our, it gives us a feeling of happy satisfaction and enjoyment when we serve you. They're saying, you say, thank you, and they say, it's our pleasure. It's my pleasure. It gives us a feeling of happy satisfaction when we serve you. So in the context of us as Christians, where do you find your pleasure? Where do you find happy satisfaction? Where do you find enjoyment? And that's a question to ask ourselves, especially as 
people who say that the Lord is the beginning and the end of us? Where do we find happy satisfaction? Where do we find enjoyment? And is it in Christ? But before we even get started to talking about the different types of pleasure and all those things, we have to talk about why pleasure is important in the first place. The importance of pleasure, right? The first one is because pleasure is given to us by God. Pleasure is given to us by God. Pleasure in itself, the feeling of happy satisfaction and enjoyment is not something that is just, that is so sinful. It in itself is a feeling given to us by God. And we see that in Ecclesiastes. Can y'all turn it up there for me? We got our Bibles? Yeah. If you got your Bible, raise it up. Yeah, we have our Bibles. Okay, so Ecclesiastes 2, verse 24 to 25, it says, There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also I saw is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? It's believed that um, Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon. So this is a man who saw and experienced all the things of life. He's writing this book from an older perspective of this has passed, I've enjoyed, I've been fulfilled. So even he, he says that apart from God, who can have enjoyment? So pleasure in itself is a human experience. It's part of the human experience. It's God, God's way of giving us an avenue to enjoy life. Food, the earth, regular things, examples of just pleasure that doesn't go against God is, is hang, being with family, eating good food. But we know that as humans, we know that as humans, anything that is given to us by God, the devil and our flesh always finds a way to pervert it, always finds a way to abuse it. Whenever something is taken out of the context of Jesus, it turns into something else that becomes unholy. So that's the second point, that pleasure can hinder or further our walk with the Lord. And we're going to look at Luke 8, verse 14. It says, and as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. And their fruit does not mature. Their fruit does not mature. This is about the word of the Lord. So the word of the Lord is given to his, to his people it starts to grow, it starts to produce fruit, but because of the cares and the pleasures of this world, it becomes choked up. The growth is stopped because there's a competition here. Because there's an imbalance. So a lot of us, we come here, we hear the word of the Lord, we hear the Sunday message, we get our word from God, and then when we leave, Everything that happens in life, the things that we find satisfaction in, the things that we find enjoyment in, chokes it up where our fruit cannot mature. God told you on Sunday, you need to forgive, you need to forgive, you need to forgive. Monday through Thursday comes school, work, all of those things, different things that you find enjoyment in, come in. And suddenly you're back resentful. You're back resentful. So as we're walking this walk as Christians, we really have to be, we have to understand where we find our enjoyment in and realize where the balance lies. Because if we don't, our fruit gets choked up. Our fruit gets choked up. Because we're seeking Fulfillment. We're seeking pleasure from things that are not going to bear more fruit or mature our fruit. Does that make sense? Y'all following me? And this is a perfect segue to our last, our third point of why pleasure is so important. Is because remember how I just said imbalance. I said in the first point that pleasure is not a sin in itself. Pleasure is not a sin in itself. But we know that anything that we put above the Lord becomes an idol. Any 
anything that we put above the Lord becomes an idol. So our feelings of what is the definition of happy satisfaction and enjoyment, when it's put above the Lord, it becomes an idol. And that's one of the main reasons as to how it hinders our walk with the Lord. I want us to look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 to 5. And I, I know Ray Roy has used this verse before. It says, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. He's not talking about people outside. It says these are people who have the appearance of godliness. He's talking about those of us who say that we carry the Holy Spirit. So he's talking about people in this room, people part of the body, or who say they're part of the body. They have an appearance of godliness. And I want us to focus, it says, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So they love pleasure. They love the feeling of happiness and enjoyment that comes from the things of this world more than they love God. More than they love God. Do you know what individuals whose entire life pursuit is pleasure are called? They're called hedonists. And some of us, we don't even realize we are hedonists or that we're engaging in hedonism because it's so slick. Because it's so slick. Because the definition of hedonism is the pursuit of pleasure, sensual self-indulgence. Sensual self-indulgence, where everything that you do, all the things that you seek, your first priority is your pleasure. It's your fulfillment, your happiness, and your enjoyment. And as Christians, we have to be really careful we have to be really careful and strive for our utmost pleasure to be in Jesus. Because when you pursue something before you pursue Christ, what is it called again? An idol. It's an idol. And like I said, it's so sneaky, it comes in without us even realizing it. And that's what leads to the last point of why it's important is that sin can hide itself in where we find pleasure. Sin can hide itself in where we find pleasure. I want us to go to Hebrews 3.13. Are we there? Okay. It says, but exhort one another every day, as long as it's called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. I want us to focus on that word deceitfulness. It says deceitfulness. Oh, I got the definition right there. Okay, I'll read it. It says deceitfulness to give a false impression, whether by appearance, statement, or influence. Sin is very deceitful. Sin is not going to come to your door and say, hey, come fornicate with me. Sin is not going to come and hit you on the head and say, Come idolize this with me. That's not how it works. Sin comes in through the back door, through the window, without you realizing you left it open. And you may not know, right now as I'm talking about the things of different pleasures and all of that, you may not be able to identify your pleasures, but I bet you I know who does. The enemy can identify your pleasures because he may not be able to see what's in your heart, but he can see your patterns. 
He can see what you give your attention to. He can see what you spend most of your time doing. And he will use that. He will use that. So we have to remain vigilant. We can't be victims. We can't be victims when God has called us victors. There's no way. And what sin does, it appeals to the parts of you that are not necessarily sinful, but the holes in you. So an example of this would be you, let's say you're lonely. Being lonely is not necessarily bad. The feeling of loneliness is not bad. How many of us have felt lonely? We felt alone, right? But what ends up happening is, where do we look to when we're lonely? Do we hit up homeboy we know is gonna respond? Because that's the first thing that would come to some people's minds. Since I'm lonely, let me spend time with somebody. And spending time with somebody is not necessarily a sin, is it? But before you know it, it's two in the morning and you're not in your room. Right? Don't act holy, holy, we please. Okay. <laughs> right? And let, let's say we use lust all the time. We use lust all the time. What about when some of us, we understand that there's pleasure in food, right? We understand that there's pleasure in food. There's pleasure in a good meal. My mommy cooks good. I'll tell you that. So I eat good. Yeah? I know your mommy's cook good because everybody's looking strong and healthy. Right? But what happens when we abuse that? It turns into gluttony. It turns into gluttony. Whenever you overindulge, whenever you overindulge, it turns into gluttony. That's why we have some people who can't even do a lap around the church because they've overindulged. But, but we love talking about lust. But that is also a sin. Even in regards to gluttony, the time you spend on your phone is an overindulgence. Your screen time is an overindulgence. Because it gives you that temporary satisfaction. And we don't realize that social media, TikTok, Instagram, all of those things are designed that way on purpose. They're designed that way on purpose to take your attention. To make you feel a temporary feeling of this is good. So you see how it starts as something normal. A normal emotion. A normal feeling. And then... Before you know it, it's turned into something else. Before you know it, it's turned into something else. And we have to ask ourselves, what do we run to first? When those feelings arise, when those holes come up, when our emotions are starting to get overwhelmed, where do you go first? Where do you go first? And especially if we call ourselves followers of Christ, Christians, that God is our Lord, wouldn't our pleasures be within the Lord first? He would be our go-to first. My favorite example of this is David. David knew this concept very well. David and I talked about it earlier. About He said, I will get more undignified than this. I don't care who's watching. I don't care who's looking. I'm about to do my big one for the Lord at all times. Because he's the only one I care about. He's the only one I care about. We see this in Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11. Is it up there? Amen. Okay. It says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So what David is saying that in Christ there is a fullness of joy. At his right hand, right here, at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. The right hand is a symbol of favor, honor, and dignity. 
So he knows that the father isn't going to withhold from us. God is never withholding from us. He's saying that in the presence of the Lord, there is a fullness. So you're not missing out on anything that is happening outside. I promise you. I promise you. He's saying that, David is saying, in the presence of the Lord is where he finds his pleasure. How many of us can say that with our chest? That his presence is what fills us completely. That his presence is where we find our joy. And that's an internal check that we all should be doing daily. Of Lord, am I finding my happiness? Am I finding my joy in you first before anything else? Am I delighting in the presence of the Lord? Or is it, or am I not like David who said I was glad when they said, let's come. Let's come to the house of the Lord. Or am I dragging my feet, waking up 15 minutes before church starts, doing five minutes of prayer before my fast is supposed to begin? Am I dragging my feet or am I running because I'm going to my father's house because I'm about to be in the presence of the Lord, because I'm about to be with my father, be with my comforter, be with my friend, be with my savior? And that's something for us to ask ourselves that can I say that his presence is where my full joy lies? Is where I delight in him above all other things. Can we say that? Ask ourselves. Because his presence is the most valuable thing that we have. His presence is the most valuable thing that we have. So, as we're talking, those are the points, y'all. If you didn't, if you didn't get the importance of pleasure, if you're taking notes, the first one was pleasure is given to us by God. The second one is pleasure can hinder or further our walk with the Lord. The third one, pleasure can become an, an idol. The fourth one is sin can hide itself in where we find our pleasure. Right? So we've talked about how pleasure can become sinful. But there are godly pleasures. There are godly pleasures that can produce holiness. Because we know holiness is what pleases the Lord. He calls us to be holy. He calls us to be set apart. If you don't know what holy means, holy means to be set apart. So what are some godly pleasures that can produce holiness in us? I got four for you. Right? Four. Amen. The first one, I didn't give you a three for one. Oh, my gosh. Is worship, prayer, and fasting. These are godly pleasures that can produce holiness. Godly pleasures that can produce holiness. Worship, giving honor to the Lord, giving back what is due him, the breath that he breathed in us, we're giving it back to him. Prayer, communing with the Lord. Communing with the Lord. Having relationship and intimacy with the Lord. Prayer is so important. That is how we communicate with him. And that he speaks and we, he speaks and we speak back. And then in our fasting, we're on a 40-day fast. And I really hope y'all aren't just starving yourselves. Because then what is the point? Fasting is a self-denial so that our spirit man may be louder and can grow. So that we're not dulled. But we're sharp to hear what the Lord is saying. So being able to give glory to God holiness, being able to pray consistently, pray without ceasing, holiness, and being able to deny my flesh in pursuit of Christ through fasting, holiness. And the next point on how godly pleasures that produce holiness, fellowship with godly community. 
Let's look at Psalms chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. It said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaves do not, does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. It says that blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Do you know what it means to walk in the counsel? It means the people that you put around you that you let speak into your life and in your ear. Check the people that are around you. My, I think I had heard this, either my dad or somewhere else that said, if I compare you to one of your friends and you get offended, check your friendship. If I say, you're just like so-and-so and you're immediately offended, why is that your friend? Why is that somebody you're allowing to speak into your ear and give you counsel? That after you've prayed and you've sought the Lord, those are the people you allow to speak into your life. That those are the people that you find pleasure in spending time with. People that don't bring you to holiness, but that you are actively fighting temptation when you're with them. The people you surround yourself with impact you whether you want them to or not. And that's why God gives us discernment as to who we keep around us, especially those who are in our inner circle. Because it doesn't mean everybody in your life, film, grow. The lady at church said, I have to cut you off. Counsel of the wicked. The three or four people that you allow to speak into your life and you speak into them, that you encourage each other in the word, that you hold each other to a standard because you hold yourselves to a standard and the standard being the word of the Lord. So let's, let's think about who, which, which people we have in our council. The fourth one. The fourth? The third. Definitely the third. The third one. Studying the word. Notice how I didn't say reading the word. Because I think it's really easy, and I'm, I'm victim to it too, to open up my Bible to read my word. But just reading it as if it's a textbook There's a difference between reading your word and studying the word because you know the word gives life. Understanding your word so that you can apply the word in your life. And you're only going to be able to do that if you are studying your word. And if you're dragging your feet to your Bible, do you think you're going to go in there fully ready to receive what God is giving you? If you're crying every time they say Bible study, do you think that you're going to go in there ready and open with a fertile ground in your heart to receive the word, whether it's by yourself in your own personal study or with others. As Christians, we say that God has saved us. He is my savior. Lord, abide in me as I abide in you. Jesus, you are my comfort. You are my all these things. And it's cool to say these things in church during worship when the emotions are high, but when it comes time for pen to hit paper, Y'all are asleep. We're asleep. So a godly pleasure for us to indulge in is studying our word. Because it's studying our word that will produce holiness within us. The last one, but not the least, is surrounding ourselves with holiness. And what we're doing right now as we're fasting, where I hope we are doing right now as we are fasting is making sure that the things that we are ingesting are holy.
that we know that the things that we receive is not just food. The things we let our eyes digest, the things we let our ears digest, the things that we allow ourselves to consume, it will come out. Whether you know it or not, whether it's intentional or not, this one is such a big deal. It's such a big deal because a lot of times we try to make things, oh, it's, it's my personal, my personal, my personal. But a lot of things we have to ask ourselves, do I, want, I, do I want God to be pleased or do I want my flesh to be pleased? It's, there's not much. And that's a question you ask yourself daily, not just because of a 40-day fast, y'all. In general, the things that I'm consuming, is it going to produce fruit in me? Or is this something I'm going to have to pray about in two weeks? Or is this something I'm going to be at this altar again on Freedom Night begging to be released from? We need to surround ourselves with holiness so that we can also produce holiness. As we're reading our word, as we're worshiping, as we're praying, as we're surrounding ourselves with God, the community, as we're studying our word, and but we are consuming things that are working against that. So the work that you're putting in, you're also fighting against. And we know those things that the Holy Spirit has told us to let go of. We know those things that the Holy Spirit has said, this isn't helping you. Even though the Bible says that all things are, all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. So for the things like, for me personally, God had to convict me last week about, I read a lot of YA novels and all that. I'm not gonna read YA. Amen? I read a lot of YA novels. They're not necessarily bad. I read them in my free time. And what was happening is my Bible and Sarah James would be next to each other. It's 10 p.m. I have to wake up at 5.30 to pray. But my hand is itching for Sarah James. And I was convicted because... I could read three chapters of Sarah J. Mass back to back. Now it's one in the morning. Did I wake up to pray at 5.30? No, I woke up and said, God, have mercy on me. And he checked me immediately. And he checked me immediately. Because am I gaining fruit from reading Sarah J. Mass? No. Is it necessarily wrong? No. But anything that keeps me from the Lord, I might as well throw away. Because I said he's the beginning and the end of my life. And we all have said to God, I want you to use me. Lord, I want to enjoy your presence. God, I, you are the one and only. You are the Lord of my life. So I'm going to walk and talk like it and allow the Holy Spirit to, collect, to correct me. And our theme is spiritual awakening. Our theme is spiritual awakening. The Holy Spirit needs to reveal to us the things that we are finding pleasure in that is not producing holiness, nor is it bringing us closer to the Lord. Ask yourself, are the things that I'm putting my attention in, are the things that I'm receiving a certain level of happiness from, a certain level of enjoyment from, are they pleasing to the Lord? Are they feeding me in a way that the, I know the Lord will be proud? Are they in line with the things I told God I was going to do January 1st? And these are the times to get that in check. These are the times to allow God to do his work in us, y'all. This is the time when we have the energy, when we have the stamina, when we have the, you know, your parents are still, they're dragging a little bit. If they could go back to where we are right now, understanding the importance of Jesus and his presence, they would have given their lives a long, long time ago. I tell myself now that if I had known, 
if I could go back and tell my younger self, Jesus is the only one that's going to get you through. God is the only one that's going to get you through. And I know that's a lot of our testimonies. Where there was a time when God kept us even though we didn't acknowledge it. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. Put that up there for me please. It says, remember also your creator in the days of your youth. Before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. In Ecclesiastes, this is the first time it references God as a creator. We were created to worship something. We were created to worship something. So it's saying, remember he who brought you here. Remember that he is the one to worship. He is the one to give our praise to. He is the one to give all of ourselves to in our youth. Remember God in your youth. This is the time where he wants y'all the most. Before things come. Before evil comes. Before trials come. Where you're looking back and you're shaking your head. And unfortunately, a lot of us are already look back and shake our head. Remember, because it's especially, especially us as youth or us who are, who are young, our brains hasn't even fully developed our long-term processing of consequences. So the things that we do now, we're not even... Scientifically, our brain is still working on that part. So the things that we're doing, the things that we're doing, we're not thinking. We're just doing. We're just doing. We're just doing. So when we're so young, we can't fathom eternity. What feels real is what feels real right now. And that is a dangerous mindset to have. That this is the end. This is the beginning and this is the end. Because we know, especially now that we have Jesus, we know that this is just a prelude to eternity. And we know how short life is. We know how short life is. And since people in here have the Holy Spirit, he's told you, you've received salvation. You know this is just... This is a small part before a very long, long eternity. So imagine this temporary life that we have, that we spend, you'll spend it with in, indulging in whatever, saying YOLO, 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 and then when the time comes and you stand in front of the Lord, he said, what did you do? Enjoyment. And that's the thing. It's a temporary thing. Because a lot of us, we're in cycles right now too. Where we'll run from God seeking whatever we thought was sweet. Seeking whatever we thought was right. Seeking whatever we thought was going to fill us in the moment. Just to come back and run to God. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired? You're not tired of relearning that God is the only one that's going to do it. God is the only one that's going to fill that hole. God is the only one who's going to provide a fullness of joy. Aren't you tired? You're not tired of seeking pleasures in the world and always coming back, always asking for forgiveness, always relearning the meaning of repentance. There comes a time when you have to choose. And I pray we don't choose too late. I pray we don't choose too late. I pray that we make the decision today to 
say, God, I will live for you. There is no more for this month, and the next month is another story for March, but then when my birthday comes in June. But no, I will do it for the summer, but when Dirty December comes in, I will. We have to decide. We have to decide. Who is the owner of our heart? Who are we submitting ourselves to? Who are we finding pleasure in? It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other things will be added unto you. And he is a good father, so why would he withhold something good from you? The things of this world will not fill you. I promise you. I promise you. Because there's a reason why each and every single one of y'all are in here right now. You're not here because you stumbled in. You know this address. And you could have left when I started with, in Jesus' name. But you're here because there is something in you that wants the Lord more than anything else. Because you know that nothing else has worked. Numbing yourself didn't work. There was no fullness in that. The high always comes down. Drinking until you fell out didn't work. Because the hangover the next day was fire. Having sex because you don't because you don't feel loved, you don't feel it doesn't work because the next day you still feel empty. You feel even more alone. Eating as much as you can didn't do anything for you because you still feel like something is missing. Getting at the best grades that you can get didn't do anything for because post grad nobody cares. And now you've lost identity. Because you were seeking a fullness. You were seeking satisfaction in something that was temporary. In something that was temporary. Instead of the presence of the almighty king. The presence of the Lord is the most valuable gift that God has given, given us. It said that when he was up on that cross, what tore was the veil and then he brought down the Holy Spirit for us so that we would be carriers of heaven. He did all that so we would have salvation and be able to be in his presence. And we are squandering it every time we get the opportunity. He died for us to be in his presence so that a pastor doesn't have to go in and do it for you. Are you squandering? Are you taking for granted what Jesus died for? It says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So I want us to ask ourselves as Christians, let's rise up. Let's rise up. I'm not taking too much of y'all's time. I want y'all to ask yourselves in your hearts. Talk to the Lord right now. Actually, talk to the Lord right now. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you where you are finding your pleasures. Where you are seeking fullness, satisfaction, enjoyment. Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. And be open to receive the answer. Because some of us, we're not going to hear sweet answers. But that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to convict, correct, teach, and guide. So allow him to do that. Allow him to do that. Talk to him. Talk to him and ask him to reveal it to you. Reveal who sits at the throne of your heart. Lord, reveal to me. Reveal to me who I'm putting above you. Reveal to me if my pleasures have become an idol. Reveal to me if I'm indulging in hedonistic tendencies. Reveal to me if my entire life I've just been pursuing pleasure instead of pursuing you. Reveal to me, Jesus. Reveal it to me. Correct me. I'm open to the correction of the Holy Spirit because I know all you are doing is sanctifying me, creating fruit in me, creating holiness in me. It's a hard pill to swallow when the Holy Spirit tells us, you haven't been giving me your best. But it's 
to mercy because at least he's telling you so we can fix it. So that we can repent and turn back and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me in my ignorance and forgive me for the times that I even did it intentionally. And that's what we're going to pray next. I want y'all to repent. And don't just repent because I'm saying it. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Because you don't have to build a golden calf to have an idol. Lord, forgive us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us for the times when we filled ourselves up with things that weren't of you. Have mercy upon us for the times when we sought our satisfaction in something in this world rather than going to you first. Forgive us for the times when we felt human emotions but didn't give it to a God who understands. Forgive us for the times when we sought answers in places that were just forfeit, were just deceitful. Forgive us for the times when we went and indulged in sin. Forgive us for the times when we heard you say, no, don't go, but we still went. yourself in a cycle, if you have found yourself in a cycle, not just found yourself, if the Holy Spirit has told you you are in a cycle, you are in a cycle of doing the same thing and hoping for a different, a different answer, where you are doing this thing over and over and over and over again because it satisfies some part of you, if you have found yourself in a cycle, and you know, do not come up here just for vibes. Do not come up here just because you want to be touched. Come up here if you want to be free. Do not come up here just because you want somebody who you think is more spiritual than you. If you have found yourself in a cycle where you are pursuing pleasure and it is hindering your walk with God, you have found yourself where pleasure has become an idol, where your happiness, where it's filling a certain hole in you and is leaving you empty time and time again and you keep coming and repenting, coming. You're not repenting because repenting means you've turned around and changed your mind. But you keep coming back, 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 back because it's feeding something. It's filling something even for that moment. And then the Holy Spirit comes. We sang a song earlier. It says, only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Only you can fill me up. The bridge says that Jacob's well can't fill me up. The world cannot fill me up. The things that I'm going to, they're not doing what they, what they promised and advertised it was going to do. They said that if I get a boyfriend, I'll be good. They said that if I get this degree, I'll be good. They said that if I, if I go and I change my major, it will be good. But you will continually be searching and searching and searching. And you will find that at the end of it, it was a lie. My VOGs, can y'all come up here for me, please? These individuals are up here to not only pray for your freedom, but they're here to come in agreement with you because 
we are making a decision today that we are not going to be held bound by anything of this world. We are making a decision that God, God, it's only you. Because what we're talking about right now is also the fruit of self-control. If you see yourself in a cycle, you are struggling with the fruit of self-control. And you need to ask the Lord to give you strength and give you desire for him first and him most. So not only are they going to pray for the freedom from this cycle, but you both are going to come in agreement that, Lord, this is the day it ends. This is the day it stops, and this is the beginning of me stepping into the fullness of your presence, the freedom in your presence, that when the shackles fall, I'm not going to go back searching for them. That when you open up the jail cell, I'm not going to be thinking back and forth, teetering on the edge. Remember the times when the high came down from whatever you did. And you realized, why do I keep doing this? Many of you are in your rooms right now, just shaking your head. Your head is down, saying, God, why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep doing this? You're doing it because it's feeding a part of you. You're doing it because some part of you believes that it's going to make you feel better. It may feel good, but it won't make you feel better. I want y'all to pray for them. I want you to go to whoever you feel led to pray for. Only you can satisfy my heart. Only you can satisfy. And if you're in the congregation and you're just like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I need y'all to pray for them too. Because you may not be struggling with this right now, but you've been in a place. You've been in a place where you did something and it didn't do what you thought it was going to do. And these are your brothers and sisters in Christ who have the courage to come up here and say, I want to be free. Pray for them. Join them in prayer. Because they want to be free. It's not easy to come up here and say you're struggling with something. It's not easy to come here and say, I hate the fact that I do this. My flesh wants this, but I know that there's better than this. They don't want to live in a cycle of guilt and shame anymore. Join them in prayer. And if you didn't have the courage to come up here, Jesus sees you there too. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Because you don't need these people to come and touch you for you to have freedom. That was the whole point of Jesus dying on the cross. So that we would be able to experience him. So speak to him because he hears your voice as loud as he hears any of these people, including myself. Because you're his daughter, you're his son. And I pray for freedom over all of these people oh god those that are in the congregation those that are here seeking prayer from one of the vogs lord in the mighty name of jesus i pray that shackles will be taken down i pray oh lord that jail cells will be open i pray oh lord that any self-inflicted self-inflicted cycle oh god it would break right now in the mighty name of jesus and lord as we're praying for freedom i pray oh god that you oh lord would not have them go back to their vomit but I pray that you would increase, Lord, increase the maturity in their fruit, in the fruit of self-control. As they are repenting and saying, God, I don't want to do this anymore. As they are repenting and saying, Lord, the world isn't doing it for me, Lord. The sex isn't doing it for me anymore. The lust is not doing it for me. The gluttony isn't doing it for me. The greed isn't doing it for me. Because we are calling these things as they are. We are calling these things as they are. Lord, as they're repenting, God, show them what true repentance is, that it's a turning around, that it's a turning around. I pray, oh Lord, that people's trajectory of their life right now would be turning around, turning around where they only want to seek you. 
that they're seeking first the kingdom of God and all other things would be added unto them. That as they behold you, that they become what they behold. That as they abide in you, you would abide in them. I pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to come upon this room for those that are up here and those that are in the congregation, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would see their hearts, God. You would see their hearts, God. Let this word not fall on deaf ears. Let it not fall on hardened hearts, God. But let them seek you first, God. Let them feel Jesus, God. Lord, for the people, oh God, who said, I don't know what's going on, I pray that you would open their eyes to see, God. Lord, I pray that they would open your eyes to see, Lord. Pray that God would open your eyes, Lord. I pray that God would open their eyes, Lord. Pray that God would open your eyes. Would open your eyes. Because as you deny your flesh, your spirit man begins to be strengthened. So you'll be able to see things, understand things that you didn't understand before. Lord, let them find their pleasure in you. Let them find their happy satisfaction in you. Let them have a feeling of joy when they come into your presence, when they open up your word, when they experience you. Let them desire it above anything else. That their first priority is Jesus. That their first thought. If you've been prayed for, you can go back and sit down. You don't have to stop praying, but it's so that we know who to come in agreement with. So if you've been prayed for by one of the VOGs, you can go back to your seat and talk to the Lord, talk to your maker, talk to your creator. For this is a time when he wants you the most. Because this is where we make the most mistakes. And we don't want to look back in our 30s and 40s and say, what was I doing? We don't want to ask ourselves, what were we doing? Because imagine... Imagine what the Lord has in store for you when you give him your yes. It's not a decision that you regret, I promise you. I know because I said my yes. I gave God my yes. And I don't regret it to this day as I stand.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want y'all to just raise up a thanks. Say thank you to Jesus. Say thank you to him. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you for the sacrifice that you gave on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you. Thank you for what he's done for you and what he continues to do for you. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for the hearts that have repented. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. On this Palm Sunday, we remember you, Jesus. We thank you, O Lord, for your people. We thank you, O Lord, for this word. May it not just be today, but let it be something that, that transforms their lives coming forward. Thank you for every life that is in this room. And thank you for who you are, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. stretch forth our hands to Marion very quickly. She came up here. She was able to give the word. She was able to let herself to be used by, by God. A vessel. I pray in the name of Jesus that any plan of the enemy will not come to pass. I pray as she came up here to give the word, she will not be a target in the eye of the enemy. You will go before her, behind her, and all around her. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would meet her at her needs. Just as you formed a fire around your children, and you are a cloud by day. We pray that you will continue to use her to move generations. No plan of the enemy will come to pass. We thank you for her life. We thank you for how you're using her. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the life of Marion. We thank you that you were able to use her this morning as a vessel in your kingdom. I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever plan of the enemy upon her life will not come to pass. From this day onwards, the Lord will go before you. The Lord will go behind you. The Lord will go all around you. When you seek him, you will find him. As you use her today, you will continue to use her. Generations after her, lineage after her, will continue to praise the name of Jesus. We thank you. Everything that she did this morning, every word that she raised, I pray that it's honorable unto you. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And the church said, Amen. Amen. While y'all take your amen, seats, amen. go ahead and introduce yourself to our neighbor. Look to your neighbor and say, you look good today. You look good. Tell them happy Say it one more time. Today. Say, you look good. Tell them happy, happy Palm Sunday, y'all. How y'all doing this morning? Y'all know what Palm Sunday mean, right? Yeah. What do you mean? Okay, you know. What do you mean? You know, I, mean? I, don't, I don't got the scripture, but, you know, my God, Jesus, he was riding on a donkey, you feel me? And, you know, he got a bunch of palms, you know, and they were just waving. Hallelujah. We just, yeah, yeah we're going to get right into the <laughs> announcements. So first off, we have offering baskets coming around. Um, Nifemi is going to bring the offering basket around. If you have Cash App or you would like to zell us, the information is going to be on the screen. So the Cash App is Money Sign, T-O-R Hospitality. And then the Zelle is 806-445-6877. But if you have Cash, Nifemi is coming around. So... How many of y'all are on our remind? Show of hands. How many of y'all? So that ain't 100%. That ain't even like what? 95%? So if you want to be connected, 
outside these walls of TOR, please, please, please be a part of our remind. Text Lubbock TOR to 9400. So, yeah, what we got next for announcements? All right, so who has been to Table Talks in the room? Make some noise for Table Talks, y'all. So Table Talks is our monthly Bible study. So we're going to have our last one next Tuesday, I believe. And it's going to be here in the church um, at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. So all the fellas in the house make some noise. They tried, they tried, they tried, they tried, they tried. Okay. You guys, you tried today. You tried. Break it down. <laughs> y'all try today. I'll give it to y'all. I'll give it to y'all. I'll give it to y'all. So, <laughs> so if you're a fella in the house and you want to have a Bible study with a bunch of other fellas, we have our lovely co-head Precious as well as Jalen. Y'all can go ahead and wave so they can see y'all. Hey, Precious. Hey, Jalen. Yeah. What up? And basically, they have a Bible study for men. And that's where they're able to just be together and just share the word of God. So when do they meet, actually? Um, they actually meet every Wednesday. Well, yeah, every Wednesday except for the first week. Um, and it is going to be at 6.30 p.m. 7, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. And if you want the address, it is up there. And just a reminder, it is not the first Wednesday, but the Wednesdays that fall after. Amen. Amen. Okay, this is my favorite part. All my ladies, make some noise. You know, bring it up. Bring it up. They're jealous, guys. Yeah. Sorry. They show is. They show is. We don't need no music. Yeah, Period. no music. No but music. yes, we have women's empowerment every Wednesday. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be at on Wednesday at what time, ladies? Prompt on the dot, um, and it is going to be at the app. Um, can Crystal and Justina please wave? Please rise, please wave. Woo! Nice one. Um, so, yeah, if you would like to be a part of Women's Empowerment, please see Crystal or Justina after service. Amen. So, the next thing that we have on the agenda is our recharge, Woo! and it is every Thursday at 7. And this is like a prayer line, y'all. See, this is the season of finals. We're looking for jobs. We're looking for internships. You know, we're looking for jobs. So um, we don't have recharge. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we don't have recharge. We actually don't have recharge because we pray every single day on Zoom, except for Sundays. Um, so if join our fast and join our Zoom to pray. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so next, we would like to call up Queen, our outreach head. Everybody clap it up for Queen. Hey, y'all, hey. So I just wanted to let you, hi. I just wanted to let y'all know about our next volunteer event. It's going to be on April 12th. It's basically a family bingo night at the Lubbock Impact. It's a really great charity that has been serving the Lubbock community for so long. They have so many programs that helps all of those in need in the community. So every, I think it's every month, they do a, you know, big family night where they bring in, you know, families who are in need and things like that. And just do something really fun and really, you know, um, just entertaining for them so that they can have something that they can enjoy together that's, you know, free and inexpensive. So um, on April 12th, they've given TOR the honor of being able to host their next one, which is going to be again April 12 at 5 30 we do have a volunteer limit um it's going to be 10 max so if you'd like to join up please use the qr code on the screen use your phones and if you have any questions please reach out thank you amen let's get a thank round you, of queen. applause okay so next we're gonna call up emmanuel and he's gonna talk about freedom night so let's Woo! get a round of applause for emmanuel y'all y'all tired Praise God. What's Friday? Okay, okay. Yes. I want to ask another question. Today is Palm Sunday. What's Friday? Yes. So, um, as Christians, we 
we appointed Friday as Good Friday, which is the day we remember the crucifixion of Jesus. And it happened that that Friday happened to be also our Freedom Night. So, so this this uh, Freedom Night this uh, Friday had been captioned the Judas mistake. Yeah, and it's it's going to be awesome because we are going to tap into the the work of Christ on the cross. And if you read the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter twenty-seven from verse one, the Bible says something. It says that when Judas realized what he did, he had remorse in his heart. But one thing, he made a mistake. He went and killed himself instead of him repenting. So. And remember, our fasting season this period is what? Returning to the Father. That's our fasting season. This caption is returning to the Father. And instead of Judas to return to the Father, he ended it. So this Freedom Night is going to be powerful. It's a night of intercession. It's a night of repentance. It's a night to return back to the Father. It's a night that will search ourselves. And it's a night that will pray. So if you want to pray, you're going to pray your way out. So if you want to intercede, please come to the Freedom Night. It's a good Friday, and I pray that God will give us a good gift in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, y'all, make sure you are at the Freedom Night. Every Freedom Night is just so amazing in the presence of the Lord, so make sure you are there. Okay, so next we're going to call up our AD, Glory, to come give us some information about an, an event coming up. So please clap it up for Glory, y'all. Hey y'all, I'm Gloria, I'm one of the leaders here. And um, we're gonna talk about something that we have this coming Tuesday. Um, we have Femi and Amorin and Faith going around passing flyers, so go ahead and look out for that. But we are collabing with The Way Church. Do y'all know what The Way is? Yes. So we are collabing with The Way Church and a bunch of other college ministries on campus. And we are going to do a worship night this Tuesday at the USA. So it's at the arena on campus. So those who live on campus, you can just walk there, you feel me? Um, but yeah, so uh, we had, there was something last year in January that was like about the same thing um, that had Lecrae and Hovey there. But this one is gonna be on a much bigger magnitude because it is every single college campus ministry that is collabing, okay? So it's gonna be KB, Christian rap artist, Hovey, Christian rap artist, All City, Hayden Winton, and Nick Hall, okay? So this is free, okay? Free money, you ain't gotta pay nothing. Just pull up and receive the word and experience his, his presence, amen? So, also, if you want to volunteer, there is a link. If you go to the way, IB, the way underscore IBC on, um, IABC on Instagram, they have a link in their bio that will allow you to register to volunteer if you feel led to serve um, for this concert. Amen. So once again, it is free, free, and it is at 7.30 p.m., but I advise you to come when the doors open at 6.30 because, like I said, it is a big arena. If you want a great seat, if you want to even, like, just sit by the dressing room of KB and Hobie, that's too, too, like, come early, all right? Come on time because we will start on time. All right? Amen. Cool. See y'all there. Amen. Let's get a round of applause for that. So if you didn't get a flyer, our hospitality workers are going to go and swing by one more time. Make sure y'all get a flyer. Make sure y'all Take one more for a roommate. And yeah. You. So this is my favorite part of the announcements. If this is your first, first, first time, serving with us, T-O-R, on a Sunday morning afternoon. Please rise to your feet so we can welcome you to this family. Let's give them a round Let's of give applause. Them a round Let's of encourage applause. them, y'all. Woo! Oh, wow. 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 Welcome them, y'all. Welcome them. Wow. Get their names. Yeah. Uh Please keep standing. Please yeah. keep standing. If this is your first time, remain standing.
and we're going to ask for your names so we can welcome you to this beautiful family. Amen? Amen. All right. So what's your name? Bryce. Bryce. Everybody say, hey, Bryce. Mesoma. Mesoma. Everybody say, hey, Mesoma. Chidera. Everybody say, hey, Chidera. Hey, Chidera. All right. What's y'all's name? My name is Ayo. Everybody say, hey, Ayo. Hey, Ayo. All right. What's your name? Everybody say, hey, talk bad. Hey, talk bad. So, if y'all could follow our lovely hospitality workers to the back, we want to give please. you some refreshments and to welcome you to this family. Let's give them a round of applause, y'all. Let's clap it up for them. Let's clap it up. Let's keep clapping. Let's keep, keep clapping. clapping until they if your Jesus rose on the third day, let's Hallelujah. keep clapping. Mama. Yeah. Hallelujah. To the one that saves. Amen. All righty. So if you're not already, please follow us on Instagram. It is tor.lubbock. So all of our amazing flyers, programs, and everything will be on Instagram. So please make sure not to miss out on that. Also, we have a TikTok as well. It's the same um, name. So yeah, can we all just rise up as we close out? Did y'all have a great Sunday today? Did y'all have a great Sunday service today? Make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, so as we're closing out, I just want you guys to just close your eyes and just begin to thank the Lord for a great service, for his protection, even bringing you here, for his protection for every one of us in this house. Some people are not here right now, but the Lord is still protecting them. Just give the Lord thanks. Thank him for what you know he has done in your life. Thank, you. Thank him for what he has done in others' lives as well. Just have a heart of gratitude unto the Lord. And so, Heavenly Father, we just come before you as your children, and we are just so grateful for the gift of life. We're grateful for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary for us so that we can come into relationship with you. God, we just say thank you. We thank you for every person that you've used in this house, oh God. We thank you for what you are doing through every person in this house, God. We just pray that even as we leave, oh God, remind us that we're not leaving without your spirit, oh God, but remind us that your spirit is still with us, oh God. God. I pray, oh God, for even the word that was given today, may it penetrate in our hearts, oh God. May we remember the word that was given even throughout our days, throughout the week, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. We pray, oh God, that even as we go home, we're riding in our cars, God, please keep your hand on us. Protect us, oh God. Um, help us, oh God, even in our academics, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord... We pray that every time we meet, we will meet in joy, oh God. We pray that every time we meet, we will meet with testimony, oh God. So God, we just reverence you and we thank you for who you are unto us. We thank you for who you are in our lives, oh God, and for your mercy that you continue to have on us each and every day. And so Lord, we just give you all the glory and we give you all the honor for it is in Jesus' name we pray. So let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever, man. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Find yourself a partner. Let's get that last part. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of our lives, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed week.